everybody. I hope you're well. I hope you're keeping safe. It's me, Cecilia Karanja. Once again, I'm here to talk about IVF. As I promised you, we'll be going around the country to talk to doctors who are doing IVF uh, procedures so that we can be able to, to get variety and we can also get to, to be educated about uh, IVF procedure. And today we are privileged to be at Savara Health Care Services with Dr. Washira Morage, who will be talking to us about IVF procedure because he does IVF procedure. People didn't know, now you know. And uh, please help me welcome Dr. Washira Morage. Karibu sana, Dr. Thank you, Cecilia. Yes. I am privileged to be in the program yes. and to enlighten people about IVF. Mm -hmm which still sometimes is a myth, some people don't believe in it, mm -hmm. but just to shed light and educate the people, the viewers, the listeners mm -hmm. about IVF procedure, sure. uh, which is uh, an option mm -hmm. uh, for the couples that are suffering infertility, mm -hmm. the couples that are not able to get babies. So IVF is happening in the country mm -hmm. and uh, we people are improving in the skills and we are doing it and many mothers who were originally desperate to have babies mm -hmm. are now able to have babies. Wow, thank thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Karibu to the show. And uh, we would want to just get to know who are you yes. and uh, what do you do and where are you situated? Thank you, Cecilia. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Washira Murage, an obstetrician uh, gynecologist and uh, IVF uh, specialist. Uh, IVF uh, specialist, so let's, let's talk about reproductive, you know, reproductive health because globally or not to limit ourselves to IVF, that's, that's what we do. So I'm a reproductive health specialist mm -hmm. uh, working here at Savannah Healthcare Services mm -hmm. and also at Kenyatta National Hospital. Uh, so we do a variety of reproductive um, uh, procedures, including antenatal, mm -hmm. that's for pregnant mothers, mm -hmm. and doing uh, obstetric, I mean gynecology. Gynecology is now harboring other things, fibroids, ovarian cysts, uh, ectopic pregnancies, and, and, and many other procedures. Mm -hmm. And then of course doing ART. ART is uh, assisted reproductive technologies, okay. and this is where now IVF is. So those are other are other main um, things that I do, and also what we call MIS, that is uh, minimal invasive uh, surgery, mm -hmm. and that is using laparoscopy, which goes very well. Uh, with, with IVF goes very well, as mm -hmm. you're going to see in the program, mm -hmm. in ART, uh, assisted reproductive technology. So those are the main things that we do mm -hmm. at Savannah Healthcare Services, and I do, because I'm trained in Germany, wow. India, okay. and, and Germany twice, mm -hmm. of course, and India, and countrywide, we also training, mm -hmm. and you've also been trained. Okay. So, so these are procedures that we are doing here at Okari. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is good, Dr. Harry. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Ray. and uh, also we would want to know how do you do it? Like uh, when a patient want to do IVF and they want to come to Savannah and they want to see you, where do they start? Uh, normally my number is open. I give my number freely to the viewers, mm. which is 072 4545 okay. And I'm based here in Upper Hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, Savannah Healthcare Services is now a hospital. Mm -hmm. We now are meeting in patients. Wow. We have theaters mm -hmm. and we have delivery units. Mm -hmm. We have a newborn unit. So all those are things that we now do. So they can get me here at Upper Hill. We are off Mara Road, mm -hmm. opposite CIC, mm -hmm. next to Kenyatta National Hospital. And if they call that number that I've mentioned and they call me or they come to Upper Hill, Mara Road, Savannah Healthcare Services, they'll be able uh, to get me. In Kenyatta, we have a department, which, mm -hmm. is, which I'm a member. Uh, the Department of, uh, of Reproductive Health, mm -hmm. and we also have a subsection that deals with infertility. Mm -hmm. We have not been blessed with an IVF unit, mm -hmm. but we are working on it. But we do screen patients, and that's another place, because not everyone, everyone can be able to come to Savannah Healthcare Services, sure. but even people who can come to Kenyatta National Hospital we have an infertility clinic mm -hmm. that basically handles um, 
you know, the clients with infertility problems and you do procedures. And it reaches now the IVF, the in vitro fertilization now mm -hmm. procedure. Then now they can come to our offices, yeah, and then mm -hmm. we can be able to, to, to support them. Okay. So it's just making a call and visiting our center. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to guide them through okay. on what to do. On what to do. Yeah. And how much is your consultation, Dr. Ray? Uh, you? Consultation is 3,000. It's 3,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when a patient comes the first day, they've paid the 3,000, yes. what happens? So when they come the first day mm -hmm. and uh, they pay the 3,000, mm -hmm. then you're able to, to see them. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'm very flexible because mm -hmm. you realize not everybody who can afford the 3,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So based on how they are, mm -hmm. sometimes I, I refer them to Kenyatta. Okay. If, if I mention my consultation is 3,000 and one is not able to afford mm -hmm. the 3,000, and they have NHIF, which I'm not able to use at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on it. As soon as the procedures in NHIF are streamlined, you'll be able to jump in and start offering the service. So such clients, mm -hmm. I refer them to Kenyatta, okay. the infiltrated clinic, which is also very, very organized mm -hmm. for the initial assessment. Okay. Because you are talking of a client, just like you have mentioned, mm -hmm. who comes in and says, Doctor, I've been married for this period of time. Yeah. And I'm not able to get a baby. Mm -hmm. That's why it all starts. And then there's assessments, and you go through uh, their history. You want to know for how long. Because when you're talking about infertility, inability to get a baby, you are saying that that particular couple has stayed for about a year. We really insist on a year. Mm. Because the frequency, the regularity at which they, they, they try is very, very important. Mm. So that history we given and then we want to know how, what is the journey that you have traveled? Mm. Yeah, have you seen other doctors? Mm. Have you done any investigations? Because True. the investigations in infertility are very expensive. True. So you don't want to repeat things that have been done by other colleagues. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you know, to assess them vis-a-vis -vis those investigations, see what you can add on that mm. to be able to see how to help them. So once now you get the history, you go through the investigations, go through the medical history because some have undergone some medications, mm. some have undergone even some surgeries. Mm. And again, you want to know how did it start? Yeah, were you, were you, did you, did you have any surgery? Did you have any? any medications, what did you do, what were the procedures done. So all that kind of history. You have to take. You have to take, and a detailed one. And the other thing that we are insisting these days is that we want a couple. Yeah, we do not want to have one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because 40% of the clients with infertility problems is caused by the ladies. Mm -hmm. The other 30% is for men. Is for men. Mm -hmm. And the other now that is combined for both of them. So there's no way you're going to have very successful infertility treatment without having a couple. Of course, there are unique cases. There are people who come and say, I'm coming because I was divorced because we couldn't get a baby. And now I have found someone else that we can have a baby. And they have children from a, 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 you know, an a ongoing relationship, relationship yeah. or a previous relationship. And I believe they are OK. Mm. So I just want to come on my own accord mm. so that I know how is my body. Because I believe mm. I'm the one in the problem. Because when I divorced with that other uh, partner, they went ahead and got a new uh, relationship. And then they have kids. Mm -hmm. So in such unique cases, which yeah. you have to individualize, then you can be able to deal with one person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have donors? Because mm -hmm. you're now even having people calling us as asking, can I donate my sperms? True. Can I donate my eggs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we now have the bigger centers mm -hmm. have even banks that they can, you know, they have, they have, they have, they have, they have a, a log of uh, donors yes. that called upon. Mm -hmm. They can just come over and donate. Yeah. So that kind of history, that kind of assessment is very very important and that is why we begin with the clients when they come mm -hmm. so depending on the issues they have yeah. there are others that we do give medications sure yeah depending mm -hmm. on the investigations yeah. there are others that we now have to do surgery and that's why i mentioned uh, minimal invasive surgery being one of our on our treatments which mm -hmm. i'm also 
quite trained mm. that we do and this is where you use laparoscopy this mm. is where now you can even open the tubes mm. you can even now um, you know remove cysts mm. you can now even do hysteroscopy operate the in a, in a, in a day case way the patient walks in you're able to do the procedures and they go so there are various treatments that you offer yeah yeah depending on how the client come mm. and then of course now there is that group mm -hmm. that now will yes, require IVF mm -hmm. and that is now the group that now will proceed. So we all we we, we have that range of product, mm -hmm. you know, from the initial assessment mm -hmm. to the primary treatments to that core group mm -hmm. that you require IVF. Thank you, Doctor. I love the fact that you say that uh, you don't push away people who are struggling with infertility yes, yes. because I've seen doctors who have segmented themselves on doing IVF procedure which I think um, we also need to be considerate about this other group of people yes. who, who maybe they need surgery, yes. maybe to just uh, laparoscopy to open the tube. Yes. Maybe there are those people who just need medication yes. so that they can just conceive. So um, I think uh, you having that package yes. is, is very good because very you're good. incorporating each and every person. Yes. And uh, for today, Dr. Ari, I want us to talk about IVF. Yeah. I've come to you. Yes. I'm a patient. Yes. I need IVF. Yes. So basically, what would you look at? What, what is that one unique thing that you'll be looking at as Cecilia yes. that I've come here? I need to do IVF. Yes, I've struggled maybe for 10 years or 20 years. Now I'm here. I need a baby. What do I do? Okay. Uh, very good. Um, so when you come in and you need IVF. Either you have been diagnosed to have IV to need IVF. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you have come in, then you have undergone the procedures. Mm -hmm. Then there are, there are some tests that you have to do. Yeah. Because IVF is a very, very uh, special process and expensive for that matter. Mm -hmm. And very delicate. Small things can spoil the success, the outcomes of, of IVF. Mm -hmm. So we run through you in terms of examination from head to toe. Mm -hmm. So you want to, to do some investigations. Mm -hmm. You want to think about, do you have diabetes? What is your weight, the BMI? Oh, That's also great. very, very important mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And if we find the BMI is very high, then we may tell you, why don't you have some time in the gym? Mm -hmm. Why don't you see a nutritionist? And we have all that. Wow. Yeah, so That's that you, you know, you get a nutritionist to mm -hmm. guide you mm -hmm. through so reducing weight. Eat, because again, a high BMI is, mm -hmm. an, is, is, is an obstacle to the success I of IVF. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once we, are we assess the physical, mm -hmm. your physical, yeah. and we are convinced, then we go to the investigations. Mm -hmm. We want to run your body. So we want to do blood test. Yes. The blood test, we want to make sure that you have no diabetes, there's no disease like TB. We also do HIV. And a rider here does not mean that a HIV person cannot do IVF. Mm. We just want to know, are you HIV, I mean HIV negative mm -hmm. or positive? Mm. For the positive ones, we want to know how is your viral load? Mm. How is the control, mm. the treatment mm. profile of that, of that uh, HIV status? Mm. What is the status? If you have a very, very high viral load, then you require that you take treatment and you come to unrecordable. Because HIV patients who are positive, when they, are, they follow up on medication, they go to a state called unrecordable, that mm -hmm. you cannot find the virus in the blood. Mm -hmm. And that is more or less, they are like HIV negative for that matter. Mm -hmm. Because the drugs, the, the, the ARVs yes, have right. suppressed the viral load cabisa. Mm -hmm. And that is the status that we want. Yeah, because there are patients who, who don't have, just to digress a bit, because it's a special mm -hmm. condition. Mm -hmm. There are some patients who are HIV positive and they are okay. They have normal tubes, the man's pumps are okay, and all that. But they just want to have a baby. So those are patients that we normally can allow when they have unrecorded. And many couples mm -hmm. have become pregnant that way. So a day or two, mm -hmm. they are negative. You have uh, given them medication, they have eggs, they can now try yeah they yeah, cannot yeah. try mm -hmm. yeah and and then if there's a discordant couple maybe the man is negative mm -hmm. and the lady is the one who is positive then the man can use what is called pep mm -hmm. post-exposure prophylaxis for that man so there are couples doing that 
And Dr. on that issue, is the baby affected in any way if the couple is positive? In fact, let me tell you, we are not even getting HIV positive babies these days. At all? At all. Wow. In fact, it's less than, I, I don't know, less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Yes, because if they follow the instructions that they adhere to the ARVs during the antenatal period, mm. and when the baby comes out, you either choose not to breastfeed at all, mm. or you exclusively breastfeed the baby. Yeah. And the baby is given PEP mm. yeah, for 18 months. For 18 months. Yeah. Once okay. you do that, most of the babies, and we have now, uh, you know, HIV mothers getting a baby after another, they have mm. even four, and the babies are okay, yeah. there is no problem. And it's good that you've addressed this issue because there are so many people who come to me and they tell me, Cecilia, I'm positive, can I get a baby, can yes. I do IVF? Yes, is your right to yeah. do IVF. Mm. Yes. So we just want to know the HIV status for us to be able to manage and see is, is how is the HIV. Because again, you don't want to do all those procedures yeah. and then the baby gets, becomes yeah. positive. So mm. you want to counsel them on how are they going to, and it is so possible to do that. And then of course, as you're doing these procedures, mm. uh, you know, you're able to know you're dealing with a HIV mother so that mm. you're able to uh, avail the necessary, uh, you know, e exemptions as you're doing the procedures. And also when you're freezing, they need to be different yes, from... Yes, indifferent, yeah. absolutely, yes. Mm. Yes, yeah, so all those things. But most of the time you find if uh, the, 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 the HIV status, the, the, the viral load is unrecordable, mm. they always be good. Yeah. But definitely they are isolated and kept in a different compartment. Okay. Then there are things like hepatitis. Mm. You want to know whether there is hepatitis positive. I mentioned about diabetes. Mm. You want to know do they have syphilis? Mm. Um, uh, did you, how is the kidney star status? How is the liver status? It you, can affect? Yes, yes, yes. If mm. they have a liver problem, mm. if they have hepatitis, mm. you want to know so that you can control. Remember you are dealing with cells, right? Sure. Yes. So if you have patients with other conditions, other comorbidity, you want to control that comorbidity. Because mm. if you have like a patient with a diabetic that's out of control, mm. a kidney problem that is out of control, sure. mm. a hepatic or liver condition that is out of control, if they have TB, mm. all those are going to affect the, growth, right? of the, the growth of the baby and even the IVF procedure. The procedure itself. Yes. Okay, so you have to assess that. Mm -hmm. Then you have to look at, to do an ultrasound. Do they have fibroids okay. for the lady? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we want to remove the fibroids. Sure. Especially the ones that are sort of inside. And I have a small diagram here which mm -hmm. can show the fibroids that are inside. Yeah. You can see like these fibroids mm -hmm. that are inside. This was definitely can they affect the IV. Because remember, as we are going to see, mm -hmm. once you get the, the fertilized egg, and you're introducing it into the uterine cavity, then you don't want to get things like fibroids inside, ovarian, I mean, um, polyps. Sometimes you can have adhesions, you know, like threads inside here. If you have fibroids that are outer, those ones are okay, mm -hmm. because they're not affect the inner the part, inside. the inner, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So once you're happy with that, then you want to do the hormones. Dr. Abel, let's talk about when, maybe for example, when you put the, uh, the whatever, the embryo inside yeah. and they come and land here, maybe yes. you need to tell them the dangers of the embryo it's landing. Boat. Yes. It's a boat. Okay. It's Most likely it's going to, go into a, go into a boat. Why would that happen? Because it's on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, um, and familiar surface, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. Because you need a healthy endometrium. Mm -hmm. The endometrium is the inner lining. Mm -hmm. So you need that because there is a way you have stimulated the lady as you are going to go on and see the procedure. Mm -hmm. You have given the lady hormones mm -hmm. to be able to prepare the inner lining. It's like making a bed yeah. for somebody. Mm -hmm. You're making a bed, you know, you have to make sure it's warm and everything. Mm -hmm. The same way, when mm -hmm. you're giving the lady those medications, mm -hmm. you want the endometrium to have healthy tissue. Because once you put the fertilized egg there, it starts to grow. Yeah, the placenta starts to attach. Mm. Okay, mm. so if you're having a rough area like a fibroid, mm. then it cannot penetrate. True. Yeah, so it will just wither off, die off, and then a boot and come out. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other things like hydrosaphenix, like this swelling you see here on mm. the tube. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. this swelling in hydrosaphenix 
hydro means water, sulfonyx means tube. So there's some fluid in the tube. That fluid is normally infected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you do the IVF procedure, you introduce the fertilized embryo here. Mm -hmm. Normally, this 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 infected fluid keeps flowing into the uterus and back, mm -hmm. and has bacteria. Even in normal circumstances. Even in normal circumstances. Even when I'm not uh, yes. pregnant. Yes. That is what it does. That's what it does. It's okay. like it. It's a circulation mm -hmm. from here all the way into the tube and out back like that. And you're saying it is infected water? It's in infected. What do you mean by infected water? Bacteria. Okay. Yeah, chronic uh, PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, mm -hmm. is the commonest single most reason for IVF. It's the one that blocks the tubes. Yes. And blocks tube forms more than 90% of the patients who come for IVF treatment. Okay. It's because the tubes have been damaged they cannot accommodate fertilization. Mm. And it means that the bacteria came up and they were in the tube here, they destroyed the tube and it was blocked. And once it is blocked, then remember the egg is picked from here, the sperms are introduced here into the vagina region and mm. then they move up and fertilization occurs here. True. Yeah? So you're saying that if this is damaged by some infection that came, that means it's blocked. So the egg remains on that side, the sperm remains on the other side. side. So that damage, continuously damage to, to the tube, damages the tube and then it balloons, it enlarges. Just the way you are seeing here, it enlarges and then there's bacteria there. Mm -hmm. So if we if introduce the embryo here, it will be engulfed by the, remember it's a cell, mm -hmm. it's just engulfed by the bacteria and you lose. So you sure. want to know how are the tubes because if you have hydrosulfonyx, mm. you want to operate. Mm. Yes, you want to operate the tubes and remove them so that this raining sort of remains sterile. Okay. Safe uh, for the baby. Safe for the baby. Okay. Hormonal profile. Yes. You want to know what is the luteinizing hormone, the mm. follicostimulating hormone, prolactin levels. Yes, prolactin is another. If ladies with very high prolactin. Mm the success for IVF will be very poor. Mm -hmm. So you need to know how is the hormone status of the lady. Mm -hmm. If you've done a pap smear, okay. Mm -hmm. Remember pap smear is a screening for cancer of the cervix. Yeah. It also gives us an idea, do we have um, viral infections like human papilloma virus? How is the cervix? Do we have early stages of cancer so that wow. if you have, then you treat them first. Because it will affect. Because it will affect. And these are the things that yes. most uh, Yes. You want to want. do vaginal swabs mm. so that if you have uh, other diseases like chlamydia, trichomonas vaginalis, mm. NASTI, you manage it and treat it. Because you are looking at a very sterile area that you need. Yeah, because the embryo yeah, is very yeah. delicate. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Remember the embryo on a normal circumstance comes from here. Mm. But here you are introducing it artificially from, from the vagina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the lady has to be stable in terms of all diseases. Yeah. Okay. You want to do something called antimorarian hormone. Antimorarian hormone tells us how is the state the health of the ovary. Mm -hmm. How are the follicles, the eggs? Do you have the right number of mm -hmm. eggs mm -hmm. in the ovary? Are, are, they, are they healthy? So the AMH, the antimalarian hormone, is also very, very key. And now it's agreed upon globally that patients uh, or clients who are about 40 and above, we encourage them to get eggs, donor eggs, mm -hmm. right? Okay. It's a hard um, decision to make for mm -hmm. the clients because they want their own. Yeah. So when you're telling them that they have to get donation, mm -hmm. either from their sisters or other relatives, mm -hmm. or they have to borrow from a stranger, yeah. they ask the second question that comes, uh, I mean, will it be my baby? And then you have to, uh, to explain that this, this, this baby will have three genetics, yours, the donor and your husband, yeah, so they're more or less... Let me ask you, Dr. Harry, yeah. on that point. Yeah. I would really love to know. Yeah. I've carried a baby. Yes. Uh, I've done a donor, donor egg. Eh? Yeah. And, uh, and this is a question I get a lot. Eh? Yes. I've done donor egg and then my husband's sperm is used. Yes. Then I carry this baby. Yes. At any one point, does it have any genetic of me? Yes. How? It has. It has grown in you. 
-hmm. Yes, the circulation, the blood, the everything. So they will get a bit of it as well. A bit of it. Yes. So that is why, let me ask you, if we do surrogacy, yes. does it mean even the, the one who carried the baby, we have a bit of the genetic in the baby? Yes, they oh. have a bit of genetic in the baby. Okay. Yeah. And also the emotional attachment, don't forget the that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the baby comes and they have been in the womb for nine months, yeah. And that's why we are still awaiting the surrogacy law to yeah. come out mm -hmm. and to be able to guide us mm -hmm. because it's normally war. True. When the when the baby comes, the mm. one who has been faithfully calling and receiving all the money, mm. the care in the hospital, <laughs> and the expense of uh, the person interested Imagine. in the baby. Once they get the baby, they want yeah. to stay yeah. with yeah. it. Yes, but they carry a bit of their genetics. Of it, eh? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So once we've now done the hormonal tests. So remember, you have done X-rays, ultrasounds, blood test cleanings, septic screen for any infections. You have looked at all the organs. You have looked at the reproductive system, and you're happy. Then you want to check on the man as well, yeah. the partner. Yeah. Okay. Mm. You have to do similar tests. How is this man? You do the blood test, mm. the STI screen up as well, the similar, the diabetes, any endocrinological problems, do mm. they have thyroid disease, and also the lady also thyroid disease is important. Yeah. Yes? Mm. And then you check them, uh, the sperms, how are their sperms? Mm. Yeah? Because it's, it's good to mention here mm. that men, we are having a lot of sperm problems. Yes. We are not understanding, is it the food, is it the lifestyle? Yeah, mm -hmm. but definitely those two are contributing, especially the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who tend to smoke a lot, yes. tend who tend to drink a lot, people who tend to take mineral a lot. Remember also the health as men. We are calling our pot bellies. Mm -hmm. So our repeat, which is another test that you, you need to do, the cholesterol. Mm -hmm. You need to do the BMI. Okay, all those things you need to do the men, uh, to the men, and then you look at the sperms. Yeah, mm -hmm. the seminalysis. How good is it? Is it normal zoospermia or does it have reduced sperms? And if it is reduced, how reduced? Mm. Is it sperms that you can be able to concentrate mm. and use them? Mm. Okay? Yeah. And use them in the in the in, in, in a specimen mm. for the IVFs. Mm. So once now you're happy with a couple mm. and they are okay, mm. then you now can start the process. Okay, Doctor, on that part of the men. Yes. How low is low? How low can you use a, a sperm? We look at what is the volume. In, in the first place, we look at the duration. How, how long has the man taken to abstain? Because when you're doing a seminarisis, mm -hmm. we ask the man to abstain for about three days. Mm -hmm. Some don't abstain. And if you don't abstain, then you have very low volume. Mm -hmm. So we want you to abstain for about three days, three to four days, mm -hmm. so that you can accumulate the required volume mm -hmm. of the ejaculate. Or mm. the seminal fluid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. So once 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 we check that, then we want to check are there infections? Yes. Okay. Because if there are infections, you must treat and repeat the seminalysis again. Mm. Because you cannot use that specimen if it is infectious. So mm. you look at the level of white blood cells. Mm. Those are the indicators of infection. If it's mm. more than one, then you are you are, you are worried. Mm. Then you want to look at what is their mobility? Most of the sperms are immobile. So we normally we look at um, like number one, fast moving. Number two, slow moving. Number three, you know, uh, they just reverberate where they have been kept. Mm -hmm. And number four, non motile. Mm -hmm. So you're interested in number one and two, and you want her to have an average of 32%. Mm -hmm. So you want the, space, the sperm specimen to contain uh, number one plus two, 32 percent. Mm -hmm. The fast moving and the slow one, 32 percent, we are happy. Yes. If it is lower than that, then that's not a good specimen. You need to intervene in form of treatment. Mm -hmm. Then you want to check the morphology. Mm -hmm. How do they look like? The majority of sperms are abnormal. Either they have two heads two tails, the nucleus is not there, you know, some you know, are, are attached to each other, others are dead, so you have to have a morphology. There's what we call a criteria in seminalysis, it's called a strict criteria. Up to 4% of the, of the sperm uh, count 
have to, uh, to, to be good. The mm. morphology has to be good. Mm. Less than four, then it reduces, you know, the, that potential for that mm. man to be able to make a pregnancy. Mm. Yeah, so if it is less than four, you need a treatment. Then you look at the number. Mm. You want more than 40 million. Yes. Yeah, so if they are less, and especially if they are less than 15, then you are worried you need a treatment. Mm. There are some men with zero sperms. Mm. We call them azus zoospermia. Mm -hmm. We want to know why do they have no sperms. The mm. ones with reduced, there are some hormonal medications. Yeah. Right? The ones with zero, then you want to know. And, and there's a difference between the sperms and the performance, the sexual performance. A man with azus zoospermia can be super good performer when it comes you know, to, to, to intimacy. Mm -hmm. And that people not confuse that because they may think yeah, those yeah. are two different things. Because yeah, there are people who come and say, me, I'm very good, I'm a yeah. performer. Why yeah. are you telling me? I, I can't make I, a baby. I can't make a baby. And you need to bring that to the attention, mm -hmm. that you can be that, mm -hmm. but you may not have the sperms that are required. Okay, so you want to know. Mm -hmm. And again, history is very important because the men who get mums in their childhood, oh. mums virus destroys the testicles a lot. So you have to be, did, did you get mums when you're young? Did you get any infections? Gonorrhea, for example, also destroys the testicles a lot. Mm. So you have to get that. Mm. Or when you're born, did your testicles just hang up in the abdomen? Mm. Because in the groin, there's a canal called the guino canal, mm -hmm. and the testicles are supposed to come down into the mm. testicular bag, that testicle, the testis. So mm. it's a bag. And it's very, very important because the bag normally hangs down for temperature regulation. Yes. But if the testicles remain up in the abdomen, they're overheated, they're overcooked. Mm. Yeah? So all the sperm dies and the testicles are gone. Right? So if they overstay here, mm -hmm. it will be a problem. The other thing that destroys the men's issues and looks to sperms is, mm -hmm. is, is testicular torsion. Just like you can have this ovary twist like this, mm -hmm. there's also a spermatic cord. Yeah? It can also twist and destroy testicle. Mm -hmm. Once it does that, it dies, it cannot function. The other men, unfortunately, that are born with non-functional testicles. At all. At all. Mm -hmm. So they cannot produce, mm -hmm. um, uh, they cannot produce the sperms. The spermatogenesis, the, 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 the function of producing sperms, is called spermatogenesis, cannot function. Mm -hmm. So you have to do scans on those testicles. Mm -hmm. You have to check out the hormones also in men, the androgens and, and other hormones. You have to check them. You have to, to, to check, is it the, the, the tube, the seminiferous tubules that remove the sperms from the testicles right into the penis to come out during ejaculation? Are they blocked? Okay. And then finally, if you do not get anything, then you do a biopsy. You, get, you put a needle into the testicles, get some tissue, and check. Yes, once you check, you're able now to have an idea. Mm, is this man mean? able to get sperms or not? The others, you find that it's a blockage. Mm. Yeah, so those ones, you can do what you call MESA or TESA, that is a um, testicular aspiration mm. procedure. Mm. So you can actually now do an ultrasound and aspirate. Remove from inside. Yes, okay. and be able to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so depending on what problem you have, that's how you manage it. Mm. But you first you want to treat the man mm. before then you can use the the, the specimen. Yes, yeah. Okay, Doctor, on yeah. that point, I would want to ask something. I hear there's no way you can have like a hundred percent. Is it true for men? Like you cannot say like you are a superman. Like. Uh, we, we have to, if it's uh, for sperm analysis, for the sperm count, they, they are supposed to, the highest is what and the lowest is what? Uh, when, when you're looking at the number, mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's what you're asking, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at anything more than 40 million. Mm -hmm. Okay? Parallel. Parallel. By yes. ejaculate. Yes. Yeah, that specimen is supposed to contain some 40 million mm -hmm. and above. That one you're saying, that's now the person you call normal zoospermia. Mm -hmm. They have the normal sperms. Mm -hmm. If they have that reduced, mm -hmm. then you can say that's oligo. Oligo is reduced in number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, less than 40. So if you have now 30 to 40, that mm -hmm. is mild. Mm -hmm. 
mm. or ego. Mm. If you have less than 10, that is severe. And what is the highest you can go? The highest you can go? Mm -hmm. Okay, there are some people who even have 120 million. Mm. Some even have 200 million. Mm, yes. Yeah, but That's the it. minimum required is 40 million. Okay. As long as that man has 40 million, mm -hmm. he can do it. Good. And in terms of mobility and uh, the, the, the quality, no one can have 100 percent. No one can have 100 percent. And that's, that's why you realize to, for, for the mobility, mm -hmm. you're only interested in a certain 32 percent. We don't even look at the fast moving, mm -hmm. how fast they are moving, mm -hmm. how slow they are moving. Mm -hmm. We are just looking at the combination of both. Okay. Yeah, because even the slow ones, you'll finally get there. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fast ones, you'll be. Yeah. Very fast. Yes. Mm. And you're looking when the, the embryologists will come to that, when they're looking at which is the best sperm to use, they look at the sperm going in a diagonal way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. A sperm going the diagonal way. A mm. sperm going this way is a slow one. Of course, the one that goes down in that one, they don't even touch. Mm. But they want to grab that sperm that is very fast mm. and moving in a diagonal way. That is the sperm they want to hold. Diagonal is it's going towards now the egg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine it's already done here. So you're looking at it's an up you task. Yes. So the sperm that you know that does very well yes. is the one that can swim very fast going up. Okay. But the sperm that you go on, on, on a horizontal way, mm. that's not a very good sperm. Mm. Of course, the one that goes down, the one that remains there and starts just to do, to reverberate there, it does not move. Mm. Those ones are not good quality. Okay. But the diagonal, moving up, that is the sperm that you want to go. That's the quality. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. another topic. Yeah. I analyzed uh, everything. Uh, you've known that I need to do IVF. you done all the test if you have to remove the fibroids you've removed yes now i'm here you're ready. ready you're ready you're ready to go yes, yes. So what do you yeah. do to me you want to control your reproductive system yes yeah. you want to take control now want to take control that's good we mm -hmm. want to understand take control now. You, you want to know mm -hmm. that you'll come on a certain day yes because we don't want you to come on Sunday. Yeah, true. When the f when the offices are closed, mm. you have to look for people. Mm. You want to come a day when everybody is ready. Yes. So we want to give you pills. Yes. Yeah. The yes. contraceptive pills. Mm. So we give you, we give you, then we know mm -hmm. that this is the time that you shall have the last contraceptive pill. Yes. And you have periods. Yes. Okay. Yes. As on day one, on a certain day. Yes. Because you know that if we give you contraceptives and we stop them today, mm -hmm. within the next three days, you'll have your first menstrual day. True. You're bleeding. Mm. Then on the second day, that's now when we start giving you now medications to prepare you. Mm. Right? Okay. Yeah, so we want, we want to, we don't want you to come on a public holiday. It's not that we can't be available. Yes. But of course now, the offices will be closed and all that. So you want a time between Monday and Friday. Yes. Yeah, so that mm. in case of any complications, yeah, in case of anything, you know, theater is easily gotten, everybody is there, mm. you know, to, to assist. Mm. So from the second day, we start you on hormonal treatment. Okay. The progesterones we give you, mm -hmm. the estrogens we give you, so that now we can prepare you. Mm. Yeah, so what are we doing at this moment? Mm. We are preparing you are lining okay mm. so that it becomes a comfortable baby mm. i mean a comfortable bed yes for the embryo mm. okay mm. so once we do that we're also interested in making good follicles so yes. we stimulate mm. on the 11th day we do what is called a transvaginal ultrasound a transvaginal ultrasound is an ultrasound you do through here and you're able to see the eggs direct mm -hmm. okay okay and you look at the size of the forico we want 17 millimeters and above yes 1.7 centimeters and above we know now that's a very good forico mm -hmm. once we have that mm -hmm. then we go to the next procedure because you have come on the 11th day we can see you have nice foricos mm -hmm. okay and you have done transvaginal ultrasound they are nice Foricos, so we go for them. The same procedure called transvaginal. Yeah, we introduce sort of like like a needle up this way, 
or from above, and then you come right onto this follicle. They actually normally look like this. They are ballooned and shiny. Like that? Yes, the mm -hmm. way they are yeah. ballooned and shiny. So now you so aspirate. So you're able to get inside and just... Yes, and then aspirate. It's normally a theatre mm -hmm. procedure yeah. with some mild sedation, mm. you know, sort of. Mm. Okay, and then you aspirate. And then you aspirate. Then you have the embryologist ready. Me, I've never understood here, Dr. Tariq. Yes. How do you penetrate? See, you have to prick yes. inside my... Yes, you have to prick. Mm -hmm. Some people would go this way and come this way. Others you go... Inside the tube? Yes, inside the tube. Okay. Remem remember also here, mm -hmm. there's a membrane that mm -hmm. they, can, they can puncture through here mm -hmm. and puncture through and come straight okay. here mm -hmm. and come straight here. Okay. Sometimes, you remember the abdomen is here. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can put and come. Oh, you can? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I get you. Yeah. So you just have it. And that's why normally it's now retrieval. Yes. So you're prepared, uh, your mom. And I guess this way would be better from yes. the stomach. Yes. You get yeah. to get uh, yes. more, yeah. more, more embryo, more eggs. Yeah, whichever, whichever. There are people now, it depends on which, what whichever, as, as, yeah, whichever, mm -hmm. yeah, that you're used to, you can, you can okay, use yes. it, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's retrieval. So you're retrieving. Yes, we have retrieved. Yes. Once you retrieve, now there is a second person called embryologist. Mm. IVF is done by doctors, not one person. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. there's this doctor who you prepare and retrieve. Mm. Then you have the embryologist. Mm. Okay. Mm. The embryologist is, had, has undergone training in endocrinology. Mm. Endocrinology is about hormones. Okay. Mm. It's about uh, genetics. Yeah. Okay. Mm. They have looked at cells and they understand this is this is a good sperm because mm. they look at the head of the 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 the, 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 the sperm, the body of the sperm, mm. the tail of the sperm, the way it goes, the way it swims, mm -hmm. all that. When they look clearly at the nucleus, they understand it. Mm -hmm. When they look, when you give them, when you retrieve, and you give them, they put at a micros microscope, and they're able to study and know. Yes, you have given me five good eggs. Right? Yeah. Or can you try and go back maybe to the other ovary and need another specimen? Mm. And then they're able to get so much of the eggs that they need. Mm. Okay? Mm. So once 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 they have that and now you have given the sperms, I mean the, the eggs, then they the man can now donate their sperms. Mm. Okay? And look at those. The day that uh, we retrieve the eggs is the yes. day that the man uh, yes. removed the yes. sperm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So they give the 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 the, 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 the sperms. Mm. Yes. And then the embryologist again is the one just like I've said is able to study. Yes. Okay. And then the following day they are able to fertilize. To fertilize. Okay. Sort of a physical procedure. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There's one called ICSI, which is we normally what we do. And what does ICSI mean? Mm. Um, uh, intracytoplasmic mm -hmm. sperm injection. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? That you are going intra into the egg. So you're taking this sperm and you've looked at the best sperm that swims diagonal, mm. coming up, looking mm. very like a fish, mm. you know, swimming up. You have stopped it, yes. grabbed it, and brought it, and you have put right into the egg. The egg, mm. and you can do as many. You can do even. You can even need do five or six, mm. yeah, or even seven. Yeah. You can do. Mm. All right. So once you do that, then you give it uh, about three days for the growth, just like the time that they grow here. Mm. So once now they grow. Then you come then and then inseminate and put for implantation. Okay. After implantation, mm -hmm. then you have to use some drugs. There are some drugs that you use continuously. There are drugs. You should see the prescription. Mm. Yes. Mm. There is foric, there are multivitamins, there are progesterones that you put uh, into the vagina, some into the anus. Yeah, others really. swallow, mm. they are in daily injections mm. that is to support the pregnancy because this is this is this is a it's a physical thing, it's not the natural. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. So you have to sort of imitate mm -hmm. what you're doing, what happens naturally. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah. So those injections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then after two weeks, you want to do a natural sound. Okay. And you are following up okay. with a hormone called beta HCG. I want to. Yeah. Yeah. I want yeah. to yeah. understand here. Yes. Yeah. Important. Because this is very important. Yeah. And uh, th this we 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 are really getting different things from doctors. Yes. So at this point, you have transferred me. Yeah. The embryos. Yes. How many do you transfer? Okay, um, you can transfer anything from two. From two Even and up above. To, up, to, up to about four. You don't want to transfuse many. More. Two, two, three, four, because mm -hmm. you're going to lose some. Okay. Yeah. So you've transferred. Yes. Yeah. When you tell me to go home, you've given me medication. Yes. When I'm at home, what yes. am I supposed to be doing? So when you're at home, you're device on bed rest. Thank you. For how very, long? Very, very important yeah. bed rest. Yeah. We train you how to give yourself the injections. True. Because there's some injections yes. that you're going to, to give you. Mm. Then after 10 days, then you come back to the clinic. Okay. And you want to do beta HCG. You do it after 10 days? Yes, okay. beta HCG. Okay. Remember, beta HCG doubles. Yeah, mm. it doubles every 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Every 48 hours. So if you have 10 now, in 48 hours, it's supposed to be, be 20. 20. Mm. Yeah. So that way, you are sure that you are, you are, you are growing. You know, it is growing. Once you start getting depressed, beta HCG, then you're not very happy. Mm. And just the treatment. Sometimes we even if if we if if you report some spotting, mm -hmm. yes, then you're able to tell you to come quickly mm -hmm. after those uh, after 48 hours, yeah. because we want to understand: Are you now threatening to miscarry, or what is happening? But when they're at home, bed rest very very important. Mm -hmm. Abstinence from sex also very very, very important. important. Great. Yeah. Um, I think that's very important and my viewers, you've noted that it's very important to just have a bed rest so that you can have time with your baby and uh, also you need a divine intervention. I, 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 I also feel <laughs> you need that attachment, you need to pray, you need time to just talk to God about yeah, yeah. Spiritual, how, how spiritual. it helps. It helps. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's now a medical fact that um, mm -hmm. People who are more spiritually connected, yes. even the healing mm -hmm. is better. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's very important we, yeah. we, we have those bed rest. Yeah. There are doctors who say that uh, it's normal. If it's a normal pregnancy, you just need to go back to work. But I think I don't agree to that. So uh, thank you, Dr. Ari, for that. So after we are pregnant. Yes. And we are so happy. Yes. And we are so excited. Yes. What do we do? You so, give us other medication or we just go home and So relax? you so once 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 you have now the medications and uh, you have for the beta ACG, they're just growing into hundreds, mm -hmm. thousands, mm -hmm. then you're happy. Yeah? Uh, and we know uh, after about two weeks mm -hmm. You know the beta SCG are growing. Mm. Okay. Mm. After five weeks, we even now do an ultrasound. Wow. And you can now see a heartbeat. Mm. Now we know you are there. Mm. But we'll continue with those hormonal treatment for three months. For three months. For three months. And Dr. I've sent you so many patients who've yes. done IVF and yeah. you've taken them to term. And yes. I really don't know the secret that you use. Yeah. I don't know how you get to withdraw this medication because yeah. I think it's important to also Understand. talk talk yeah. about it yes. because I guess you don't just say to toys in Madawazota in three months. Yes. How do you do it? First and foremost, there is no single IVF specialist who can boast of very good success. Mm. All right. Mm. Yeah. As you say, uh, maybe divine intervention or True. whatever, mm. but patient preparation. It's very important for IVF, mm -hmm. for IVF success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you miss something small, you're yeah, done. you're done. Mm -hmm. If this lady had a, has a polyp and you didn't get it, or they have a fibroid like this one that we have demonstrated here, mm -hmm. you didn't get it, mm -hmm. or they have high prolactin levels, you didn't get it, or they had another endocrinological problem, diabetes, and you were not able to manage it, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, then you are in problems. Mm -hmm. But hormonal treatment consistently mm -hmm. should be there up to three months. Then after three months, now you can withdraw them, and you're happy. 
three months, you have done an ultrasound, now the baby is there, then you can withdraw those treatments and now start with the calcium mm -hmm. and the multivitamins. Mm -hmm. But for the first three months, it's really inter in intensive follow-up. Yeah. By physically coming to the clinic, mm -hmm. being very available, mm -hmm. okay, and also now the digital kind of interaction. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Some patients will even have some of those things they can do at home, the follow-up treatment. They can be able to do the beta ECG. They said you levels. Then you read and respond. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They tell you they're feeling some bit of pain. Then you know it's time for them to come to hospital. Some of them will even admit mm -hmm. to hospital because you tell them, go have complete bed rest at home. Mm -hmm. But you'll find they're still cooking for their husband. Yeah. They're still wanting, they can't see a dirty floor. They, you know, they come and they want to do something. Mm -hmm. You don't want to allow that. Yeah. Yes. Some of them go for walk. Some of them will say no. They uh, start running. Start There's running. one that started running immediately after that. They want to keep fit. Even yes. In people when they are pregnant. Yes. They yeah. So we really realize that they're having threatened abortion. Threatened abortion is where they have uh, some 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 spot of some some spotting or some bleeding, some low abdominal pains. Mm. Then those are people you want to admit in hospital, and do what is called strict. Bed rest. bed rest. And stick bed rest means that you're in bed, you're feeding from there, you're showering from there, even your biological needs, you're attending to them. From there. From there. Because bed rest somehow we don't understand, but if the pregnancy starts to threaten, not before, if it starts to threaten, especially we, we the know, first few. Yes, we know that it helps. Doctor, um, there's something I wanted you to mention, maybe yeah. just uh, in a few minutes. Eh? There are people who get pregnant, we get beta HCG, and they are positive. Yes. Then after, when they come to do the scan, you find that you don't see anything. Anything. What is that? Most, most of the time, it's a missed abortion, they have lost the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because a beta HCG, that's why we do a baseline. Mm. Yeah. Once, 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 once you, you, you implant, you want to do a baseline. Because mm -hmm. it's from there that you're going to build on it. Mm -hmm. Remember the beta ICG, the way it is structured is that it tells you a pregnancy of five weeks, it has 10,000 mm -hmm. units. Mm -hmm. A pregnancy of 10 weeks, it has this, okay. this amount. Mm -hmm. So if you are starting with uh, five weeks, 10,000, then this patient or client comes after two weeks, mm -hmm. seven weeks. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to tally maybe 20,000. If you find 10,000, you're in trouble. Mm. If you get 15,000, you're in trouble. Why? Because it means it's not growing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it is not mm. growing. Mm -hmm. And then you become a bit aggressive mm. on, the, on the hormonal treatment, the okay. progesterones and, 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 and the follicles. You want now to support mm. that particular pregnancy. The hope that that support should be able to support the growth of the baby. But the others, mm. you had 10,000, now they tell you zero to five. Then you know definitely they didn't Gone. survive, it's not viable. Then you now discuss ways of terminating. And also he, I hear that Terry, the IVF baby can also go to the tube. You can have ectopic. Ectopic pregnancy is one of the complications of ectopic pregnancy. As you implant, it can go to the tubes. Mm -hmm. It can remain here at the cervix. Ah. That's another ectopic. Cervical pregnancy is an ectopic pregnancy. Yeah. So what happens? I, I thought when you put it, you put it inside. Yeah, before. you put it here, but you can put it here then. Then it remcas down. Okay. Yeah. And once it's here, definitely it's an ectopic. Mm. It can't grow. This is not the right bed for the growth mm. or the right environment. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, we've we gotten a lot of information yeah. from you, Dr. Yeah. Harry, and yes. we are so happy yeah. to just learn all those things. And... Uh, uh, maybe you could uh, tell us like how much it would cost us to yeah. do the IVF procedure from here. Okay, the IVF procedure is normally about 500,000 Kenyan okay. shillings, mm. and it varies. Mm. Um, for people who are getting donations, mm. yeah, it will be sort of 700,000. Yeah. Because if when the, those donors have been prepared, True. they have been screened, yeah. okay, yeah. their storage also costs. Mm. Yeah. And 
IVF success rate now in the country is about 46, there about. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and normally what would happen is that uh, once you spend like 500,000 for the retrial, because remember you have, you, have, you, have, you have stored some embryos that you can reuse. Yeah, so you may cut down that cost. So it will be sort of like half mm -hmm. if you have to repeat. The, the, the procedure again. Mm -hmm. It's it's really quite out of reach yeah. and we are really praying that we are really happy now that um, you know some insurance companies, NHIF is coming up yeah. and I'm sure even the government facilities will start offering IVF mm -hmm. because uh, infertility need for IVF is really really it's high. Very high. Yeah. Very, very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People 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 are getting loans, it's also weighing down yeah. on the financial stability. They're selling uh, properties. They're selling properties mm. and loans, and mm. it's quite devastating mm. uh, when they have to spend so much on, 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 on a reproductive right like that. Uh, the IVF centers are quite many now. The yeah, skills, now there are many. At yeah, least we have yeah, a yeah, variety. The skills, yeah, the skills yeah. are also increasing. Mm. Yeah. And, mm. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We, th we thank God for that. And yeah. uh, Dr. Ri, let me ask you, I've seen you have a lot of passion in whatever yeah. you do. Yes. What drives you? Um, <laughs> good question. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, mm. you know, need to assist humanity mm -hmm. is really my passion. Mm -hmm. It's really not about money. Yeah. That 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 I do this, because if you look at uh, even the cost of a delivery, the cost of even uh, a cesarean section. Yeah, we do charge quite quite low. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, for I've been me, in the theater, doctor, and I've seen the kind of work you people do. It's, it's immense. Yeah, it's immense. Yeah. Um. So it's for for me is really when I can put a smile on a, on on a woman. That is that is my greatest joy. Mm. When I walk up, when when I when I'm doing my other social activities in a supermarket. And I see a lady coming to me and running with her two kids and tell me, these are your kids. <laughs> There's nothing else as, nothing as, else. as, 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 as delightful mm. as that. Mm. If I can have a lady, I assist them from blocked tubes, yeah. that desperation, they have even been left by their husbands, mm. and then you put a smile of a baby on their face, it's that nice. is my greatest, my greatest joy, mm. to put smiles uh, in women, mm. even the ones, yeah, uh, mm. do not have that do not require IVF. Mm. The other work, yes. yeah, because you see, what we do is very different from other businesses, like maybe selling cement or building, doing a building. You know, mm. you, you know, you're having someone who comes to you because they're desperate in a way. Mm. Yeah, and I have realized that a woman who cannot have a baby. It's, 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 it's a huge crisis. They will not even be Especially happy. Even in the society. Even and in the society, yeah. Okay. They will not even be happy with what they, they do. They do. They yeah. can be whatever profession they are, mm. but if they are not able to have a baby, it's a problem. So mm. if I can come in between that and be able to offer a solution, however small it is, yeah. that is what is my main driver in all this. Mm. Yeah. And also being given an opportunity to bring humans to, Human to the to world, life. you yes. know, yeah. it's a real yeah. opportunity. Yes, and I would God encourage mothers to go for IVF, the ones who are able to, mm -hmm. because it's something else that also comes up, will my baby be exactly look for a, like a baby? Mm. Yeah? Mm. My answer to this is there are so many women who keep quiet. They just get IVF from another doctor, mm. but for the follow-up they come over yes, and they don't tell you. Yeah. Really? They just yes. want to tell you like it's a normal baby? Yes, a normal baby. Yeah. Yes, and the babies are normal. Mm. They do not have any deficits in their growth, they do no. not have any cerebral palsy, mm. they are not be poor in their abdominal performance, mm -hmm. they are not be less thin cars, mm. they just grow like other baby. True. If it's a bad baby, it will fall out early. Mm. There's a miscarriage. Mm. Yeah. The other issues, if it's some congenital anomalies, mm. they, they sort of almost like natural baby. So women should not fear. Yeah. And we are hoping that with the time 
people who have done IVF should open up and say, Yeah, we I did, did and I succeeded. I did, yeah, and I succeeded. True. So that you encourage the other people who have not other, done it. Yeah, the other ones. Because women are suffering, they get psychotic disorders mm. because mm. of this issue. Mm. And the thought of an IVF, the others who come and say, I cannot have IVF. Mm. Even things like uh, adoption, mm. we are really encouraging mothers because the whole essence again, if they can also put a smile on another baby who is neglected mm. and left, it's also something good. True. Yes, True. but for IVF, we are really encouraging, and uh, that is what we would want to see happen. Okay, yeah. and Dr. Uh, what is your parting shot? What would you tell the couple struggling out there yes. and uh, maybe the woman who's been left by her husband out yes. there and yes. they don't even know what to do, yes. they're in desperation. What would you tell them? Let them come over. Yeah. We have solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have various products that we can help. Mm. Yeah, mm. You cannot go home without a solution mm. of your problem, of your infertility problem. Mm. Be it that you just be simple advice, yeah. because some people do not even know when they ovulate. Mm. Yes, True. some people think that they only have a one um, one encounter and be pregnant, mm. not knowing that this is this is a regular, I mean, regular activity. It's not easy. The the, the chance of getting pregnant at every 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 month is about twenty five percent. So if you have 100 couples trying, about 20%, 25% get pregnant the first month. The second month, the other 75, 25% of that also mm -hmm. get pregnant. So you can see it's quite low. It's very low. So from simple device, from some medications, mm -hmm. from some surgery, coming now to IVF, mm -hmm. they, are, they are all those solutions. And, and, and let them come. Okay. You'll be able to offer holistic comprehensive approach mm -hmm. to their infertility problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Thank we you. really appreciate you okay. for your time Thank you. and for your good advice that you've given us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So my viewers, you've had Dr. Washira Murage. He's situated in uh, Upper Hill, right opposite CIC Insurance. So if you want to see him, you can call his number. Maybe Dr. you could give us your number again. Yes, 0722. Seven six forty five forty five. Again, zero seven two two mm -hmm. seven six mm -hmm. forty five forty five. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if uh, you've also done IVF procedure and you're looking for a doctor, you could see Doctor Washira Murage is here. He'll take care of your antenatal clinics, and uh, he'll make sure that he takes your baby to term until you hold that baby. So um, until next time, I'm. Um, Thank you for always being there. Please support us by subscribing our YouTube channel. Share the YouTube channel. Please support us. Just share the video so that at least we can reach out to so many people. We really want this information to reach many people because this is rich information. So share in the group. Share with your friends. Share everywhere so that at least we can be able to, to reach out. And um, until next time. Thank you so much for being there for me and may God bless you and keep safe.